So, season one, episode five of Carnival is weird. Um, it's called Babylon. And Babylon is weird and confusing in itself. There's so many different interpretations and meanings. And, you know, it's called Babel in Genesis and, and Babylon in Revelation of the Bible. So, the beginning of the Bible is called Babel and the end is called Babylon. And... From what I knew of my own um, information I had of Babylon is that I just heard the name so many times. And I think my earliest uh, memory of hearing about Babylon was uh, when the people of Babel tried to build a tower so high that it touched the heavens. And then God disrupted the progress by scattering them across the world and giving them different languages so they couldn't communicate anymore. And... And then, of course, the horror of Babylon, which we will, we will get into as this episode, because I didn't know this exactly where they were going with the Babylon plotline, but I digress. Okay, so it starts off with them entering Babylon. I see a man leaving. He has something. He's carrying, like, a blanket or something with him, and uh, he's just walking out, what appears to be walking out of town, and they offer him, tell him there's nothing for 50 miles, just dirt road, but he just keeps on walking, and he's just, like, says that they were waiting for them, and Samson's like, oh, yeah, and Samson gives the impression that he just wants to keep good spirits, no matter how nefarious things are around him, for the most part, (laughs) so, yeah, and then as it goes on, just, like, them in the camp, chit-chatting, and, um, and then we found out that that experience that Rita had in the last episode during the storm when she slept with the guy that owned that little diner, uh, that that was her first time. And then she she was talking about it with Libby, one of the um, one of the the S workers uh, from the family of S workers. I'll never get over it. But they seem very functional, you know. It just shows you like. S work doesn't have to be all bad, even though it is in this regard, because I think about the fact of them growing up that way. But anyway, uh, she starts hanging out with Libby and they're getting close. And um, and uh, Jonesy still has a very terrible attitude. He's very upset and distraught because he he saw that um that management wasn't there. So in his mind, the wizard was a lie. So he's carrying us off in this demeanor. And uh, so Samson says, okay, so he's going to let them blow off some steam on him, you know, go out on the town, you know, and then, of course, when they go out on the town, in a ghost town, it's pretty dead. And there they go to this bar and they're all dancing and um Libby and Rita go see a silent movie and then they go to to the bar and dance too. And uh the bartender is the same guy that was walking out of town when they got there. And he is uh hitting on Dottie Mae, which is um which is Libby's younger sister from the family of essay workers. And, um, and Daddy May also, she was hitting on, um, Ben earlier in the episode. So she, she wants to, it seems like she wanted some affection. So the bartender, like, flattered her. And then she ended up just dancing the night away like everyone else. And Rita and Libby were dancing pretty close. It looks like there's some type of romantic, um, relationship developing between those two. So that should be interesting. Um, and I like the fact that they didn't try to force a romantic relationship between Ben and, and Rita, since they seem like the same age and, you know, they're two main characters. So I can appreciate that. And then after that, the next day, I mean, yeah, when it's time for, uh, the carnival, they can't find Ben. Nobody knew where Ben was. He woke up in a mine shaft. This is a mining town. When they were dancing, um, the townsmen, because I didn't see any women in that town, the townsmen, uh, 
were staring at them through a window holding lanterns. And when they came to the carnival, they were holding lanterns. Jonesy's still in a terrible mood. These people, these men come in here with this negative energy. And um, so much so that even Samson had to make some adjustments. He told uh, the family of SA workers no blow off that night. And I didn't really know what blow off was. I was thinking of it as something totally different, but it's apparently when they take out their bottoms as well as their tops and like open their, you know, let everybody see the whole garden. <laughs> so uh, the father of the family said, okay. Um, and then he ended up, like, the mother ended up talking him out of that because she said it was so so much money to make because of how thirsty the townsmen were. And um, Libby wasn't going to do any blow off because she was, uh, it was that time of the month for her. So it was just uh, Dottie that was doing it. And uh, also Jonesy had an interesting night with the miners didn't want to pay to be on the Ferris wheel. So he sped up the Ferris wheel and making it really fast for them and uncomfortable and scary. And he ends up getting scalded by Samson. And then back in the pleasure tent, when they were, when Libby's doing the blow-off, the men get so, not Libby, but Dottie does the blow-off, Dottie Man. The men get so excited, they start attacking her and pulling her. One of them scratched her leg up real bad. And, okay, and that was a tra tragic experience for her. And then it cuts off to go back to what Ben's doing. And he's is he's following someone which i'm guessing this is a uh imaginary person that he's following but he says he knows him and i don't know like how who it is because if it's um scudder then he he just looks different every time i see him i'll say that over and over again i don't know who the hell this person is that he's following but uh ben said that he knows who he is and the person said but do you know why and Ben didn't say anything. He, he's just like us, the viewing audience. We don't know why. And at the carnival, um, Sophie and her mom were doing a reading for one of the minors. And uh, Sophie's mom asked her to um, to tell, ask the guy, did he know Scudder? And he said that Scudder... Uh, while he was working, he worked in Babylon for a little bit. And he ended up murdering um, another worker with a um, pickaxe or something like that. And he said that's the last he saw of him. So um, we got some more information on Scudder in this episode. And then um, at the end, uh, Jonesy stumbles upon the hanging body of Dottie Mae. He takes her down. Brings her back into the carnival, and everybody covers or travels or gathers around. Her mother is screaming and crying, and engraved in her forehead is the word harlot. Very sad, very sad. And um, and then it ends off with I think that's uh, Brother Justin's voice because he said a Bible verse in the beginning too when he was praying. Um about Babylon. I don't know if you think it was the Genesis version. And then at the end, he did the Revelations version where he, um, where he talked about the whore of Babylon. And it, it was, you know, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So there's something deep somewhere in this symbolism. I honestly am very confused about this episode because there are a lot of things, deep things that that need to be like decoded and like if this was a movie all on its own, I'd be like, what is happening? Because this is, it's thoroughly confusing. Is I I guess it was meant to be confusing. It was like being in the, in a Lotus Casino where you're just there. It was just fucking weird. Um, pardon my cursing. But it was weird. So, uh, I'll be back for episode six. So, thanks for sticking around.